Greetings, Halo fans. I try to stay away from content like this, but I came across a thread from a user called Sir Snipey. Full credit to him for putting this thread together. This is like a mega thread. I wanted to go over this and just show how Halo got off track. I talked in a previous video about how Microsoft's marketing team kind of fumbled the bag with Halo Infinite, but there's a lot more to the story. And I wanted to be very clear about where I got that information from. So let's begin. The move to customize loadouts and kill streaks in Halo 4 to appeal to Call of Duty players. Halo 5 Guardians Hunt the Truth marketing campaign misrepresenting what the game was would be about. Halo 5 Guardians use of loot boxes, aka rec packs, that could be bought with in-game currency or real money, which gave players pay-to-win advantages in their new multiplayer mode, Warzone. Halo 5 launched Missing Forge, added later. Split screen, never added. As well as fan favorite modes like Infection, Oddball, King of the Hill, and Griffball, all added later. And if you go to Sir Snipey's profile and you find all of these and you read them, there's a common theme, I think, with all of this. And I think it's, it's more reflective of what has happened in gaming at large and not just with 343. I'm not trying to make excuses. The thing that I would like to talk about is just games launching incomplete. I always wait for Steam sales, but it's not just because of the price. I would be more apt to buy games on day one if they launched complete games. For example, with the Master Chief Collection, I knew just from the chatter that I saw online, it wasn't complete. There were a lot of bugs. It wasn't functional from day one. I'm not interested in dealing with all those problems. Patches have always been a thing, but games launching incomplete, missing things that fans have expected, like those game modes that he was talking about. It's just this little anecdote right here. November 19th, Halo Infinite was released early to the public with four playlists. Most players assumed the rest of the playlists would come with a full release in December. There were no rest of the playlists. December 8th is when Halo Infinite was fully released with no additions to multiplayer. And I knew some of this because I went to one of the Halo Championship Series events and one of the gripes that I started to hear was that there was no forge and there were a lot of things missing. Um, and again, I think this is just something that's endemic to gaming at large. I think that a lot of big players like EA, Ubisoft, etc. are setting themselves up for hmm, five to ten years of pain that is going to be inflicted on them, self-inflicted to be more specific, because they're, they're putting out these games that are not ready to be released. When you have self-inflicted chaos in an industry that is a, is a billion dollar industry, multi-billion dollar industry, I don't have a lot of sympathy for the people that are running the show because, again, it's hard to maintain the sort of groundbreaking leaps and bounds that Bungie did with Halos 1 through 3, Reach, ODST, etc. It's hard to keep leveling up, but falling backwards and just missing things that are, for lack of a better term, like t-ball. Kind of ridiculous, in my opinion. I think there are a lot of people that want to see a great Halo game. I'm enjoying playing Infinite, to be perfectly blunt. But I thought this kind of recap of Halo history that I missed was well done. So, if you want to check it out, again, Twitter handle, Sir Snipey, with two... Wise. And let's be honest, the reason that these things keep happening where they're trying to bleed you of every single dollar you have is because you guys keep spending, guys being people, everyone, you keep spending the money. If you are showing game studios that you are willing to spend ridiculous amounts of money for special editions, that's your own fault because your dollar is your vote. And if your money that you're willing to spend tells them that they can get away with mediocrity, they're gonna do it. And that's true of any company. While the future of Halo is in doubt, again, just to get back to the more positive side of things, I think the MCC is fun, it's enjoyable. Halo Infinite, I'm enjoying it. 
but I'm also focused on the campaign. I might feel a little bit differently if I was experiencing server outages on a supposed AAA title multiple times a week. If you want to chime in or just give Sir Snipey some kudos, check this thread out. As someone who hasn't been around for a while, I appreciated reading and getting caught up on Halo history between Reach and now, and just to see some of the missteps with Halo Infinite. I encourage you to check it out, chime in, and be part of the discussion. Halo's community has always been one of its greatest strengths, and whatever the future of Halo is, they can only remaster games for so long. Eventually, somebody's going to have to step up to the plate in order to deliver a great modern AAA Halo experience. It can happen, but it's not going to happen with Microsoft trying to pinch pennies you gotta have a great studio like Bungie doing it, and you have to be willing to pony up money for the marketing department. I see so many old Halo ads reposted that I know the appetite is out there. And there are older gamers like myself who Halo's been a part of my gaming history for oh, 24 years now. So we're here and we're willing to spend money. We're just not willing to be cash cowed and we want a complete game not the promise of a complete game. So whoever ends up developing the next stages of the Halo universe, we're rooting for you, but mediocrity must not be on the menu. Thank you, and have a good day.